What's up YouTube, Mike again, and today I wanted to do part one of a series that I wanted to do on a video editing app called Luma Fusion. And this is on iOS, so you can use it for your iPad or of course your iPhone. Now I've already done an initial video on this. I'll throw a card up here somewhere. You'll see a card pop up, but you can watch that if you want. And that was just kind of a brief overview. So I'm not gonna cover what I covered in there as far as the cost and all that. So let's get started. Now I'm using the Elgato Game Capture, so there's probably gonna be a little bit of a delay on this, so bear with me. But today's video is just gonna be the basics. I'm gonna show you how to new, start a new project and kind of the interface of it, the app itself. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the app, essentially. Now this app would be like an hour long if, not this app, but this video would be like an hour long if I went ahead and showed you everything in one video. So I'm gonna break it up into multiple videos. So if you want to see what's next, then you're going to have to hit that subscribe button. But anyways, let's get to it. So obviously the first thing you have to do is open the app. So and once you open it, unless you have a project started like me already, you're going to be presented with this right here. So essentially, like I just showed you, that's how you start a new project. So we're just going to call this one part one, I'm using a keyboard, so that's why you're not going to see the keystrokes. We'll do that. And I want to make sure that I'm showing. Now, something you can do with this app is you can show touches. So all you got to do is hit the little question mark and show touches so on the top right. So now when I touch the screen, you can see where my finger's at. So it'll be easier to direct you on what I'm doing. So Again, when you initially open the app, this is what you're going to get. And I showed you, you hit the little plus button, which was down here, and you'd call it what you want. And then it brings you to this. Now this is where you, of course, pick what content you want to use. So if you orient yourself to the left, it's going to show you up here above this, it's going to show you moments, albums. So you can either import something from your photo library, or you can expand this and you can go to imported and you can pick um, OneDrive. So I've imported these from OneDrive. And if you see the three uh, kind of chiclets to the top left, if you click on that, this is where you can import media. So here's the different sources you can use. So you can use Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, and OneDrive. And you hit the little hamburger bar to expand upon that. So staying oriented to the top left, it's basically step back so you can see where you were last. So I can click on OneDrive, click on the folder again. It takes me back all the way to the top level menu. So this is the main menu that you're going to see. And these are your different options. So this is where you get to your photos, your iTunes, your Royal to Free Music, imported titles, and transitions. So anytime you hit the top left, that gives you all your options. So continue with an orientation. I'm not going to import anything just yet. Like I said, if you go to the right of imported here on the top and you hit the little button that gives you the expanded options so you can do a voiceover or you can import import media now if you continue sliding to the right if you can see my touches here you've got the little camera button and then you hit this then you can access your camera so if you want to record video right then you can do so and now right now I've got this running to my Elgato so I probably just confused the whole app with that, so we can skip that. But anytime you want to get to this menu, you just click the top and it'll all come back up. So let's see if we can get that guy to stop. So yeah, so we'll skip that. It's still trying to open the camera for some reason. I think it's just glitching out because I've got it plugged in using the Elgato screen capture. But from here, you've got your Photos app. So this is if you want to export, you can export it to all these various places. And the cool thing is, we'll pick Photos app. When you export it, this gives you a whole bunch of options. So if you see from the top, you can choose the resolution. So obviously if you shoot this in 4K, you'll probably want to export it in 4K or you can downscale it. And all you got to do is click here and it shows you all the options. We'll go ahead and close this guy. Then your frame rate, this is very important. So depending on, what you record this in, you probably want to export it in the same thing or your audio is going to be off. So for instance, if you did it, my camera shoots in 
I would export it in that to ensure that my audio is the same. But you've got a ton of options right here for the frame rate. So whatever you record this in, whichever camera you use, odds are you'll have that option to select when you export it. And then of course you can go to video quality. And this is gonna determine how big a file it is. So obviously the higher the quality, bigger the file it's gonna be. So if you go to extreme, it's gonna be a larger file but the quality is going to be the best and it can go all the way down to economy standard just quality and then extreme and then you've got your audio quality and you've got your file format so if you want to export this as mp4 which i recommend or you can export it in quicktime so those are your two choices for that and of course it's going to tell you the estimated size based on your project and here it tells me how much available space that i have on my ipad so I'm doing this on an iPad Air right now in portrait mode. So if you're doing this, I say this is on my iPad Pro, but if you do this on an iPhone or you're in landscape mode, landscape mode the orientation or I say the interface is gonna look slightly different. So moving on, that's your export settings. You move over here to the help. This is where you can hide or turn on your touches. And you can also watch different tutorial videos. Now, for some reason, it's still trying to open the camera, so I apologize for that a little glitch there. I assure you it does work, but I think it's just because I'm using an Elgato. But anyways, so moving on from your help, the next option over, of course, the spinning wheel of death there, or the throwing star, is your settings. And from here, you can pick a frame rate as well, but it doesn't give you all the options that you would when you export. I'm not sure why, um, but... So I really don't mess with this so much as far as the frame rate on here. I instead use the frame rate option when I export to ensure that I have the correct frame rate. You can also change your aspect ratio and then you see where it says defaults. These are, you can set these for your defaults. So every time uh, this, when you open it, these are gonna be your defaults, obviously. You got your, again, your frame aspect, your fit mode. So based on if you wanna stretch or focus on something in particular, you can select that. Uh, for photo, title, and transition, this is nothing more than how long it's gonna show a photo for, so you can slide left and right. Or, for your title, how long you want the titles to remain, and then for transitions, how long you want your transitions to be. So if you want longer or shorter transitions, and then you've got your preview quality, so if you have an older device, like this is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, so it's pretty fast. So I'd leave the preview on best, but if you have an older device, maybe you could go balanced or fastest and it'll kind of debase it on which device you're running. But those are all the setting options that you can see. So let's go ahead and import an actual video so I can kind of show you guys some more of the interface. So I'm just gonna pick something uh, that I've already imported here. Actually, we'll go to uh, photos, albums, videos, and I'm just going to pick a random one here that's not that long. Uh, so we'll pick this guy right here. So, of course, when you bring it in, you've got a lot more options. You can add notes, you can, uh, it'll show you the aspect ratio, it shows you the size, and in here, I'll show you a blow over here by my finger. You can decide how much of the video you want to actually drop down. So once you get it snipped appropriately, if you move here, you'll see the little arrow, down arrow. That simply means that you can insert it into your timeline. And with your finger, you can scrub your timeline back and forth. Now this was just a still shot, so it's not gonna show you a whole lot. And of course you can play this, preview it. And this is 4K footage, so you can see how snappy this app is. So let's kind of highlight the video and you get even more options. So we'll start to the left. Now, this video really doesn't have any sound. If it did, you can adjust it all from that. Uh, then you move down. Here's where you, if you want to add something else, duplicate it. So this actually duplicated it. And anytime you screw up, if you look over here, there is an undo button. So, and then when I pick this, you can see there's the little vertical scrubber line here. If I want to clip this clip, I merely hit clip. 
and it'll be selected and it cuts that in half. And of course, if I want to delete this, that's what the trash can is for, and I can delete it. So we'll continue around as I've got this clip highlighted. And this is where you can get into a lot of more advanced options. I'm just going to quickly show you. So if you hit the first one over here, this brings up your clip, and this gives you the ability to rotate, move it around, whatever you want to do. Now I'm just using my fingers to pinch to zoom. And this is where you can start getting into fit and frame or keyframing, and you can do various effects. So as you can see, I've got fit and frame, which I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. This is where you would add keyframes. This is your little wheel where you can keep manipulating it. But for this video, I'm just showing you where everything's at. But when you again bring up this, it brings up your opacity, so you can change the opacity of the video. You can flip it. You can orient it any way you want just by pressing that, or if you want to go back to square one, you hit reset and it'll take it back. And of course you've got fill, focus, and stretch. So along the bottom, this is another quick way to get to the rest of your settings. So you've got fit and frame, I bring this up, and this is the speed of the video. So if you want to slow up the video, speed it down, uh, you use speed and reverse. And you've got your volume, this is where you adjust the volume of it, and then here's all your different various effects. So if I click this, you can see it brings up a whole nother menu of, of options to use. So you can see what these are, I'm not going to push them all, but different uh, features you can have, you can see there's a ton of them. And of course you click on these and you can adjust the brightness, contrast, and numerous other options. So moving along the top here again, we'll go back to original. You click this, it gives you even more effects. So like if you want a comic book effect, but there are a ton of different effects you can do here. So you click on one and again, it gives you more options here to blend it, to make it uh, worse or lessen it. So you wanna go full comic or you wanna go back to normal and so forth and so on. Moving all along to the top, these are even more effects. So all these are your different effects that you can do. And within each, if you click on it, you can just totally customize about every single effect in here. So, and you can turn off whatever you've done if you want. So this just gives you, these are essentially layers. So if I want to turn off and on layers of the different effects, I want to delete that effect, delete that effect, delete that effect, delete that effect. You can do it from this menu. So continue along to the top, you've got even more. So as you can see, this has got tons of different options, different effects that you can do. And if you don't like that effect, you, like see this one's called tall, you can turn it off and then you can delete it if you want. So as you can see, you're only really limited by your imagination. So we'll go back but if you look to the right, everything I just showed you, this is just another way to get to those options. And as you can see, I've sp I slowed that one down a little bit. Um, so those are all the initial options. So let me go over here. I'm going to show you titles real quick. So if you want to add titles, I'll just show you. It's very simple. You just drag it to where you want. So we'll drag it here. And you can edit it by using a little T that pops up and you can type what you want. So I'm using my keyboard so you can't really see. Yep. So I'm going to do separate videos on these. I was just giving you a quick demo just to showing you the different features that are here and where they're at just so I can show you the basic interface. So from there then you've got your transitions and there are a ton of transitions. So as always if you get lost in this app Go to the top left and hit that, and this is how you get to all of your options available. So again, we'll go to Transitions. Anytime you click on one, it gives you the option to preview it, so it'll show you what it looks like. And if you want to add a transition, you just tap on it, and you can drag it down and drop it, and it'll add your transition, whatever it is. So if you don't want it, you can always hit your back button. But it's as simple as that. So this was, I'm trying to keep the video short, so this was just a brief overview on how to start a project 
and then just the user interface. So as always, hopefully that helped you out. I plan on doing more videos on this. So the next one I wanna do is on transitions and titles specifically. I'm just gonna spend more time on it. And then I wanna show you do another separate video on the keyframing or fit and frame option of this. So if there's any specific questions you have, just drop it in the comments below and I'll try and do that with the app. Like I said, I'm learning the app myself. I love it. It's a great app. So kudos to the developers, but that was just part one. So if you want to learn more about this app, then you got to hit that subscribe button. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching.